everyone today i would be giving you some information on an etl pipeline so this is something really interesting so i hope you like this video and it's a little informative also so in this video we will be looking at what is an etl pipeline and why we need one and you know what are the different components of a pipeline so let's get into it <coughs> So to start off with what is an ETL pipeline, so it's an automated process that consists of activities or functions and these activities and functions exist in order to extract data from one or more sources, transform and manipulate or even alter the data such that they are in the format of the target systems into which they are loaded into. So you're taking data from multiple sources, you're extracting them. And so that's all about your data extraction. And in order to load it into target systems, you definitely need to see whether the targets of the system format as well as your current data format is in the right format and matching to each other. So at that time, you have to do a lot of manipulations in order to match that format. So once you do that, you'll be able to load it into the target system. So that's about the entire ETL pipeline. So why have this ETL pipeline? Now you would have come across many people talking about, you know, data pipelines and ETL pipelines, and you must be wondering why actually this is needed. So the main use of this is ETL comes to the rescue when there is data migration problems. So imagine you have, you know, data in your legacy system, and then you want to migrate it to a new application that you would have developed or purchased. Entering all that data, as I said, in the data, you know, migration, conversion, and integration video that I took, you know, entering all that data manually is actually a very tedious work and practically it's impossible. So at that time, you need a very, you know, um, effective and optimal um, solution that can migrate your data from your legacy system to a new application. Or it can be not only from legacy to a new application it might be that a company has data from uh, has data being collected from multiple data sources let's say there's an online retail store and they they have that shop they have a retail store shop they have an online portal as well as they have local data being lo um, you know uh, entered into an excel file so when they need to migrate data to another system definitely both these two data sources the online as well as the excel needs to be combined and be you know loaded into the target system so in scenarios like this also data migration problems will definitely be mitigated with the etl pipeline the next one is data integrations so as i said integrating data from multiple sources can be done very well with an etl pipeline and then you have data conversion so converting data from you know uh, one particular format to another format that also can be done with the ETL pipeline. And apart from this, since you're, you know, wrangling data, you're cleaning data, you're manipulating data, everything leads to data profiling or data cleansing. So profiling and cleansing your data, okay, by cleaning your data, you will be able to monitor your data profile. Now, data profile is nothing but the quality about your data, whether your data has missing values or whether it has junk values or whether your data, you know, is very accurate enough, it's large enough. So all this gives you information about the data profile, the quality of data. So with this quality data, you'll be able to use it even for business intelligence and analytics. Because for business intelligence and an analytics, you need quality data, you need accurate data. The accurate your data is, the accurate, you know, your results would be and the decisions that you can make also, you can be very confident. So these are the uses of the ETL pipeline, okay? And also you, instead of, you know, repetitively, you know, um, manipulating your data and, you know, editing your data, updating your data, since there are a lot of repetitive, you know, actions being done again and again, maybe every day or once a week, twice a week, instead of doing that manually and repeating that, what you can do is with the ETL pipeline setup, this full process can be automated. So automatically, once you have the pipeline, data will flow in, get converted and it will flow out. So that's how the ETL pipeline was designed. So let us look at the components of the ETL pipeline. 
So as I said, the first one is actions and functions. The next one is pipes, which lead to a pipeline, and then you have a scheduler. Now you can think of the ETL pipeline as, you know, you have water tanks and then you have pipes connecting them, okay, for the, in, for the flow of water into the tank as well as from uh, the water to go out of a tank. So you can imagine this tank over here let's say that's a single source but of course you can have data um, you know water coming from multiple tanks okay but for this example let's say you have a uh, extraction over here okay from the source you have water now this water is connected to the next tank via a pipe so every tank is connected together via pipes and this is the pipe the entire you know the setup is called as a pipeline you can take it as a pipeline and these intermediate tanks over here they have different functions. As I put it up here, this tank here, it maybe it's responsible for impurities removal. The next tank, once impurities are removed, the tank is responsible for the water purification. And finally, the water is being loaded into a target tank. So this is the pipes and these are the intermediate actions or the functions. The entire one is called as your pipeline. And the last one you have is called as a scheduler. The scheduler is nothing but you can maybe this tap over here, this outlet that controls the flow of water and when the water has to be, you know, um, released or it has to be blocked is all controlled by the scheduler. Mostly it's not when it has to be blocked, it's when data has, the water has to be released, okay. So that is the main duty of the scheduler. So always when you want to, you know, keep in mind what is a data uh, ETL pipeline, think of this particular setup. It will be easy to understand and remember also. So when you come to the categories of actions or functions, okay. So as I said, you have every individual tank over here. So those individual actions or functions have different categories, okay. So it falls under three main categories. The first category is the extraction category where you'll be able to extract data that is of the type structured or unstructured data, okay? Then you, when if you want to know what is structured data, it has rows and columns, it has a particular format. But when you go to unstructured data, it has no, you know, standardized format. A plain, you know, image can be unstructured, uh, audio recording can be unstructured, all these fall under unstructured data. But when you look at a database, an Excel file, all those are structured. They have rows and columns. There's a format that they follow. So it's structured data. The next one is you can extract data from local data files, okay? So you'll be having Excel files. Any local file that you have, it can be extracted. The next one is you, have, you can extract data from external files or data storages, okay? So it can either be your online gmail your drive it can be the you know dropbox it can be any database of your company it can be any data storage or file storage system from which data can be extracted and the third one is third party data sets okay so you have third party data sets already available okay maybe about common you know information such as climatic changes or you know crimes all these are very common data sets that you find out there so if at all you want that data also, you can extract data from third party data sets. So these are all the different, you know, um, activities that you can do within the extraction set of function. The next one is the transformation category. Okay. The transformation category has a lot of functions related to how you transform your data, how you manipulate your data or how you alter your data. Okay. So once you have extracted data, you might want to choose from an entire DB, you might want to work with a single table. So at that time you would go with choose table. You might want to add or remove a row or column from a table. Then you might want to filter out columns, okay? You might, you, you want to do that as a type of a manipulation. You might want to join tables, perform different types of joinings. You might want to merge or concatenate columns. You might want to, uh, you know, split up columns, okay? Next one is autofill, transpose. There can be n number of manipulation functions. These are just examples that I've given you. So various tools out there, they have a lot of functions, which some are even their own customized functions that help in data manipulation. 
so all these are the functions that are within the transformation category and the last one is load so this function is responsible for loading data into your target okay so you can either you can again load it back into an external file or data storage system a data warehouse or it can be loaded into a data lake or a data mart also it can be any source into which you want to load your data provided that the source and the data that you have manipulated all that data matches the format of your target okay so that's why always when you know um, <clears throat> there needs to be a data um, pipeline that needs to be set up there's a lot of work involved in matching the source as well as your target system i'll give you some information after this on that the next one is so the next component is your pipe or the pipeline operation so remember i said that you have individual pipes that make up an entire pipeline so in these pipes what are the operations involved with these pipes are you can add pipes and you can delete pipes now it doesn't mean that there has to be only one input and one output for every function okay there can be multiple inputs and multiple outputs for every function depending on the function type okay so if you want to add pipes you can add if you want to remove pipes you can remove but when you remove a pipe always make sure think about the situation when you remove a pipe from two tanks what happens there's a disconnection of water supply to the other tanks that follow the pipe that has been removed so when that happens all the other you know um, activities or actions after that get affected so always when deleting pipes you need to make conscious decisions whether to delete it or not so this is the next component which is pipes and pipeline operations and the next one is your scheduler so as i said the scheduler it helps you to set up interval conditions at the time of which you want your data to flow into your system let's say there's a business and that business says that every day at 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening i need to be able to view reports okay i need the updated data so what happens is morning you can set up a pipeline saying that every day at a particular time this pipeline has to run okay which means that every day at 6 pm this pipeline has to start extracting data from all the sources that are integrated it has to you know convert that data manipulate the data and it has to load it into the target systems only then you'll be having the updated set of information in your target systems so at that type of a uh, situation schedulers are very helpful because they help you to extract data at the customized frequency at which you want it it needn't be every day sometimes you have real-time schedulers where every time you have data that's entering from sources automatically it will go through the entire pipeline it will convert it and then it will load it so you have real time you have every day once a hour twice a day any type of you know um, interval that you want to set for your pipeline you can set it and that's how your data starts flowing through the pipeline so that's about your scheduler so now so far i've showed you something with related to tanks and water and pipes but to see how actually a data pipeline would look like is you'll have different actions and functions over here which make up your pipeline and these are the pipes in between that actually let your data flow so the entire pipeline can be called as your etl pipeline because you're extracting you're transforming and you're loading but individual pipelines can be called as data pipelines because you have data flowing through these pipes okay so as i said you get data coming in from multiple sources so you have extracted of data from the local file you have extracted data from an online app for example then you have done a join operation and you're performing f1 f2 and f3 again some functions and you're loading it into a data warehouse and also you want to load it into a data lake also so you can do it so that's this is a very small pipeline but actually pipelines are not this small they can be depending on your use case scenario and your business requirements so once you have data as i said it can be used even for business intelligence and for analytics so all this data is taken okay and it's used for analytics because you have updated data you have the data on the right format so apart from this you can take up this data and you can start analyzing data also so that's why it leads to 
business analytics and intelligence also so usually this data is plugged into some analytics tool okay where you can extract data again from there and you can start populating charts and you can do your analysis and you can find a lot of insights from this data so that's how it works so this is about the data the etl pipeline and if this process if you're thinking it's it sounds very easy but in real time it's not easy because sometimes you need to understand if if you're a data engineer and if they a company calls you okay if you're an architect or someone is involved with these pipelines they call you and they say this is how we have we have 101 sources we have our data spread across so many sources but we are not able to you know combine this data and we even if we are combining this data it's somehow not matching the target source into the destination in which we want to load this data there's a lot of you know um, format issues and even if we complete this process we are not able to you know run this every time so at that time it's the sole you know responsibility of that data engineer or the person in charge for the pipeline they need to first understand what are the target requirements okay the target that is let's say the data warehouse and the data lake how does the data the you know schema of this particular um, source here the data warehouse how what are the rows columns what are all the different tables and all like that exist so accordingly they need to make sure that that data coming in from sources also match this particular schema so once they know okay this doesn't match then they should identify what are all the intermediate conversions that need to be done in order to satisfy that particular target schema so this is how you need to you know in detail analyze your source and your target and then you'll be able to set up a pipeline so it can either take you know months together to set up a perfect um, pipeline and once it's set up the pipeline will be tested out okay if the data is flowing smoothly from the source it's getting converted and it's flowing into your destination once the entire pipeline is tested it's then published and moved to your production where real time data would start flowing in so this is about your etl pipeline i hope you got a little bit of information on what is a pipeline why it's used and how is the pipeline you know set up so um if you found this video informative please do give this a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do subscribe to this channel and also do share your feedbacks thank you